All right, so just to recap this one that we just finished out, we have two real solutions that are positive and negative one. So that means if you were going through a graph, you were cross the x-axis at those real solution points. And these are imaginary. That means it could bend, it could squiggle, but it never goes through at those particular values through the x-axis. Because if I told you plot for me 2i, it's not at 2. You see what I'm saying? If I said plot for me negative 2i, it's not at negative 2. You don't know where they're at. And no, you won't have to be able to do that by hand. Um, that's like, not even, you don't even know how, you don't even have to do that in calculus as far as what do the eyes look like as far as squigglies, straight through or bounces, okay? All right, so if I were to finish this off, and I'm going to add a little bit more to this, my biggest power from this was x to the fourth. That means as I go to the right, I will go up because this was positive. As I go to the left, I will also go up because the number was even. And I could have three, this is important, this is huge, I could have a maximum of three changes of direction. I could. But because of these eyes, it most likely won't be three changes of direction. Okay? I would go down, you tell me, bounce, go through, or squiggle? Go through. Because this came from a multiplicity of one. Okay. Now, I'm going to head back toward that one. Here we go. I can go through. So, right here, you only see two or one change of direction. This is why I was telling you guys from before, a possible max changes the direction of 3. So COD for changes the direction. A possible 3. But this could be 1. And some of you are probably thinking to yourself, well, what happened to this? These are those squiggles, okay? And this is what the graph would really look like. It could go through. It could probably squiggle and then go through. Or it could go through, come back up, and then squiggle and then go through. You with me? Those squiggles could happen in between negative 1 and 1, or they could even happen outside of negative 1 and 1. You could have something that looked like possibly this. Went through, changed, and then squiggled and went up. Okay? You will not be accountable for that. The only squiggle throughs that you will be accounted for are the ones that go through the x-axis that are not imaginary. They have to be real. And I know it's been, I know you're learning a lot, but it, if you looked at something like this, okay, at one, you would squiggle through. Three, five, seven, all those odd multiplicities other than one. Do you see what I'm saying? This is, and I don't mind even, I, I'll say it right now on the video. I will throw another pizza party for the highest class that has the highest average for this unit, okay? Because I cannot stress the importance of last unit and this unit. Most people are afraid of calculus, again, because of those two units. And if I can get people to really amp up, then when the, you come up to that decision of whether you should take calculus or not, my hope is that you know that you're well prepared and that you could if you want to. Okay? All right. Here we go. <clears throat> so just FYI, might as well throw this in the video right now since I keep talking about this calculus thing. A big part of why I teach pre-AP Algebra 2 this year is because I want to recruit numbers for calculus. There should be a lot more people in our calculus classes, A, B, and B, C. Okay? I just had two students visit during lunchtime. And one of them I had for AB, and the next year I had her for BC Calculus. This was her junior year, and this was her senior year. I don't know why I did that. But anyway, the other one I just had her for AB her junior year, and she had a different teacher for BC. She had Mr. O'Brien her, her, her senior year. And what they're telling me at least, and this is, I think this is very true at other schools as well as what I can remember hearing, 
is that let's say you took this AB test and you got a 5. You took this BC test and you got a 5. In most colleges, they will accept this one, but they'll ask you to retake that one at their school. Even though you got a 5. And that's good because I think they ask you to retake it for two reasons. One, money. They want money. Two, so that you get a good refresher into their program and they know that you know what you're supposed to know. Do you understand? So that you don't make their school look bad if you did. If you took the next level class here, which would be Calc 3, and you did bad, you make their school look bad. Okay? But if you retake something that you show that you learned in high school, not only do you continue to make them look good, you just assimilate quickly and you know what I mean? Just get used to their level of expectations and whatnot. All right, enough of that. Let's go to our next example. What are the real or imaginary solutions? Here we go. We see solutions. We set it equal to zero. So let's go ahead and do that. x to the fourth minus 3x squared minus 4. Who wants to volunteer? What would they do? Don't be shy. Even if you're wrong, I would give your team points. A negative four? Oh, this one right here? Okay. So all I did was move the four over to the left by subtracting. And Charlie's saying, let's find the factors of negative four. Okay? Are there any other ideas? <coughs> So you're saying splitting it up like this? Okay. This is a big problem. This is big. Again, the hardest part is you could do it this way, or you could do it this way, or you could do it this way. I mean, it's just endless ors. Okay. What's the, she's saying splitting up this x to the fourth? How would you split that up? Okay. She's saying this. How else could we split that up? Ooh, okay, we get some points going on now. These are big, this is times. These are big points, guys. So right now, we're focusing on number sense for sure, okay? As far as how we split stuff up. Um, Charlie did say, whoops, Charlie did say the twos, or how you could split up fours. Raquel, concentrate on the x's. And you can split them up both ways. Let's go ahead and do these, let's go ahead and do this, these suggestions. I'd have x squared and x squared. If it doesn't work, then do these. But remember the rainbow? I always told you to start from the center and work your way out. That's kind of what we're doing here. So what should I throw out there? Ones and fours or twos and twos? One and fours. Which one's positive? Which one's negative? negative? Negative four. Nice speed, guys. And positive one, right? So now distributing this would give me this. Are we fully factored? No. Because of three words. Ooh. Because of difference of squares. So difference of squares... I can see that the difference of squares of x squared minus 4 is going to break up every one to what? X minus 2 or an x plus 2. Can I factor this out the same way? No. No, because there's no such thing as sum of squares. So I would just copy it down. Is it fully factored? Yes. yes, it is. Even though that number is not 1, as far as that power, and I keep telling you the fully factored, your power is going to go all the way to 1, this number is not 1. There's no sum of squares. So that sum of squares that doesn't exist to the power of 1, it's fully factored. All right. So let's solve for the zeros. What's this one? Two. Two. What's 
this one? Negative 2. You could do this, or you could do that, or you could do this, or you could do that. What's probably the fastest way for me to find those zeros? Solving for square roots. You don't want to do more work than what you need to, guys. What do I do? Subtract. What do I do? Square root. But most people will forget what? The plus or minus. And then they'll forget the i. So this is that. And you can write them as plus or minus i, or you can separate them out. When I was your age, I like to separate them out because the positive and negative threw me for a loop. Yes? Okay, so that's a good question. Okay, that's a, that's a really good question. I like what she's thinking. She's saying anytime you have a subtraction in your factored form, will you have a difference of squares? And here's the reason why I'm going to show this. Yes, if you could take the square root of this and the square root of that. Can you take the square root of x squared? Yes. What is it? X. Can you take the square root of 4? Yes. yes. What is it? 2. Two. But if it said x squared minus, oh, let me throw that in there. Let's say it said this. You can still do it, but it won't be a whole number. You with me? It'll look like this. We know it's going to be plus and minus. We know it's going to be x and x. But this, tell me that. Okay, that's the word, the question that that's the one that I was hoping someone would ask. So this one's not the three hundred. Okay, this one is a two hundred question, but it's not a three hundred question. She's saying this one. If it's x squared plus something, will it always be the imaginary? Yeah. For 300 points, what's important about that answer? What can you interpret about that answer? I'm trying to lead it to you without you without giving it to you. We'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. I'm going to ask that same question in just a bit. You weren't listening, no words. I'll ask it again. So you have the two real solutions are negative 2 and 2. The imaginary are i and negative i. How many x-intercepts, everyone? Two. Just two. Because x-intercepts are where the real numbers are at. Okay? Start looking at all your answers, okay? I want you to look at all your answers because that 300-point question, you'll see what I'm trying to get you to ask or know. All right, here we go. <clears throat> this one is the same thing, same question. The only difference is graphically it showed you what we just said. The real ones will cross the x. The imaginaries never cross the x, but it shows the bends that could exist between them. She's asking, because it's x to the fourth, you're going to have imaginary. The biggest thing that will tell you whether you're going to have imaginary, and this is why I gave her 20, 200 points, was what Sammy said. On your factored pieces, if you have x squared plus something, then you're going to have some imaginary, because there's no sum of squares or sum of square pieces. You see what I'm saying? All right. Let's go to... That's awesome, Sam. Nice job, too. Because the other classes, I led them to it, but you asked before I even mentioned it. All right, so x to the fourth. Here we go. Three volunteers. Tell me what you would do. 
Okay, so actually you can't use four. No, no, no. You can. You can square root both sides. But what he said makes more sense because look, if I square root both sides, what is wrong with my answer? Who said that? Woo! Right. So square rooting both sides, look at this. I would need this. And now we're talking about a lot of pieces here because we would still have to square root again. Then you have another plus or minus. So he did catch it, and that's why I'm going to give him points. The whole square rooting is important, but what's more important is, is that he caught, maybe I don't square root. Maybe I take the fourth root of both sides. Anyone, what would I get? Plus or minus two. Plus or minus two. What would I get? Do you see what I just did? I took the fourth root of 16. Means what times itself four times, because it's the fourth root, would give you 16. It'd be two and negative two. Wait, so which one so, is right So hold up, real quick. I gotta give them points. Is it is plus or minus. Drew, why is it plus or minus? Because negative two times negative two is positive four. True. Who else wants to answer that? If it's an even number, it will be plus or minus. If it's an even number, if this right here is an even number that we're going to take the fourth root, the sixth root, the eighth root, or whatever, it will always be a plus or a minus. Why? Because because of this. No, no, this is a huge why. Because even factors have a multiplicity of two so that you will have two answers. Plus or minus means two. Yeah, plus or minus means two answers. Okay? So if it's three, could it still be plus or half plus or minus? No. Ooh, that's a good question, and that's that's one that we were needing to ask and no and no, because if it's three it's not going to be plus or minus. Can someone tell me, ooh, that's wrong. Can someone tell me what x would equal on this one? Not the square root, that's what I'm trying you to see. You can cube it. You can the do cubed the root. root. Yeah. What's the answer? Three. Three. Negative two. Look. Because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, because there's 3, would give me a negative 8. This is why I gave her points on this one, because what would this answer be? 2. A 2. This is why on x squared, x to the 4th, x to the 6th, any even, why well we could do the plus or minus answer. So it can't. But we can't do that on a cubed or to the 5th. All right, how many of you, be honest, when you first saw this, would do that? you got to know the skill, okay? With this, if you did that, because most of these were setting it equal to zero, right, and solving. What three words? Difference, Difference of, squares. of squares. Watch what I'm about to do, because you'll have to learn this skill too. And it's a little confusing. Watch. A difference of squares. Pick the square root of the first one. What do I write? X squared. Pick the square root of the second one. What do I write? Four. Look at this. Remember what Sammy said on this? This one's fully factored. I'm done. But this one is going to go to what? Yeah, difference of squares. X plus 2, X minus 2. What Sammy said on this. So if I told you to fully factor something to its most factored form, you would write that. Okay? Let's see if you can do it in your head. What are my answers to the first one? 
plus or minus 2i. Nice. And then? Negative, negative 2. Negative 2 and positive 2, right? Yeah, you can do that if you want. There's many different ways to do this, guys. Okay. Um, let's see. The real or the positive and negative 2, the imaginary, or the positive and negative Wait, what? Why didn't we just do the factor? Setting it equal to zero. You can. There's just many different ways that you can factor. Here's the thing. When I was your age, we didn't have club volleyball, club basketball, all this other stuff. We didn't. That takes up a lot of your time. What did we have? 40 to 50 problems of homework every night that we went home. That's what we had. So the experience that I have is a lot. Like a lot of you can play some mean volleyball. That most people, when I was growing up, couldn't play that well when they were in college. Until they were in college because of all the years that they practiced. Right? But mostly when they were in college. What we could do well, that unfortunately a lot of people, y'all's generation, is all this homework. Because we had so much practice with all those homework problems. Okay? This is why I try to reach y'all's generation, per se. is through group bonus points. I would think of all these questions when I was doing 30 to 50 problems a night. I want you to think of them with four or five questions. There's a lot of brain power that actually goes into that. And more brain power to keep it in there so it doesn't seep out when you leave the room. Okay? Alright, so this is the question, this is the thing that I wanted you to identify. Some of you saw this x squared and it made sense to you to break it up. Especially 7th grade, y'all are killer with number sense in your mind. But some people don't like the way that 4 looks. Okay? They would want to break this up, per se. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about. Some people are not comfortable with x to the 4th. Most people are more comfortable with x squared. Go with me? So when you see this right here, x to the fourth minus 16, here we go, watch. People said, when you see an x squared, change it with a. Now watch, you have to learn this skill though because of substitution that comes from in pre-cal. Let me show you what's happening. X to the fourth is this raised to the what power? Second. Second. You with me? So it's like saying A squared. And if I see a squared minus 16, you got points for it, difference of squares, how could I factor this? A plus 4, a minus 4. Therefore, a would equal what here? Negative 4. Good job. What would a equal here? 4. But then we would go back and replace and solve this one and solve this one. What's this? What's this? You guys are killing it. Many different ways to solve the same problem. The more you know, the faster you'll be at SAT, ACT, and anything else that comes your way for the rest of your math career in high school at least. Okay? Questions? Alright, so let's go to a couple more examples to finish off. They're like special case scenarios. I want to make sure that you understand what to do, when, and why. We have these that look like this. See, so yeah, this is a different example altogether. So everything that we've learned so far is important, but put it off to the side. Put it off the side. Like, erase your mind just for a little bit. Your, your memory. Not your hard drive, just your working memory. 
We're going to learn how to factor cubes. This is a sum of cubes. Sum, addition. Cubes, because each thing can be cubed rooted. Okay? Let me help you out real quick. What are the factors of 12? Come on, guys. 1, 12, 2, 6, 3, and 4. That's it. But they came in pairs, didn't they? Two numbers. Pairs. When you factor cubes, one of them will be 3, and the other one will be 2. And the reason why is when you redistribute it all out, you would get x cubed plus 27. So write that in your notes, please. That's first and foremost important. The first one is two terms, otherwise a binomial. The second one is three terms, otherwise a trinomial. Here we go. The steps to factor sum and differences of cubes, because that has both. Sum of squares, bad. Does not exist. Difference of squares, yes. But cubes, you have both, sum and difference. Here are the steps. A lot of people miss things because of negatives. This soap will wash your hands of worrying about negatives, pun intended. Will wash your hands where you don't have to worry about negatives. It will take care of the negatives with this acronym. Same sign, so same. So you see this right here is a x cubed plus. So the same sign is going to be a plus. O is opposite sign. Okay. So the opposite sign of what was highlighted originally right here is now going to be a minus. Okay. Same opposite, always positive. Same opposite, always positive. Yes, the last one's always positive. Okay, so here we go. Oh, I should probably write that. My bad. Always positive. So this will be that. Okay, so with that being said, let's look at how do you get these terms? There's one, two here, one, two, and three here. How do we even get these? Here we go. This first one is going to come from that. What's the cube root? X. This second one is going to come from that number. What's the cube root? Okay, you ready? Next step. So first step, we did the same opposite, always positive. Step two, we took the cube roots. The last step is square this and get x squared. Square this to get 9. And the center one, you just have to multiply by these two terms. Trying to see if there was a question. You multiply those first two, those two terms right here. These two multiplied together will give you that. Notice that I didn't circle the signs. I let soap take care of the signs. I didn't circle positive three because it could have been negative. And I didn't circle this negative 3x over here in this trinomial. Because again, I want the soap to take care of the signs. So your linear is x plus 3. Your quadratic is that. And we're going to stop for now right there with those examples. We still have a couple more examples, but I'm not going to solve it out loud. Yeah, yeah, so if it was x cubed minus 27, it would be, here we go, 
same, opposite, always positive. The cube root of this, the cube root of this, oh, that's wrong. This should be what? 3. And then square this x to get x squared, square the 3 to get 9, and what would be the last one in the middle? No, a lot of people make that. Who said? Who else said negative three x? Okay, so that's a big mistake. I still give them points for it because it's not the negative. You're just looking at this and this. What's three? What's x? Three x. Let soap. Let soap. Worry about the sign. That's not the question I was going for, though. I was wanting to give 200 points for a different question from what I wrote. Remember, watch. Remember how I squared this to get x squared? Yeah. And I squared this to get 9? If you had the question, people would have put 6x there. Remember this? A squared plus what? Who said the 2? Plus 2AB. Plus 2AB plus D squared. Do y'all see this 2? Do not do that when you're doing sum or difference of cubes. Okay? Again, 30 to 50 problems a night, maybe 15 problems. Okay? I need you to understand certain important red flags. Okay? Alright, let's do the next example. Pretty much done. I think we have two more. Um, okay? 8x cubed plus 125. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take over now because we're running out of time, okay? Sum of cubes. 2, 3. Because it's a positive, it'll be the same opposite, always positive. What's going to be the first term? Nicely done. 2x. If I take this cube root of this, here we go, look at this. I'm taking the cube root, like I did on the other ones. The 8 comes out as what? 2. The x cubed comes out as what? x. And you just have 1 left over, which is just 1. The cubed root of 1 is 1. That's why it's 2x. What's the cubed root of 125? 5. Here we go. 2x is going to square to get what? 4x squared. 4x squared. 5 is going to square to get 25. Please don't mess it up. And the center is going to be 10x. Let's still worry about the signs. The linear is 2x plus 5. The quadratic is all of this. These last two go fairly quickly now that you get the gist of it. But please don't put up yet, okay? Because I want you to understand fully because the 300 question, really you can see on the last, last example. I'm asking you to factor this expression. Who can tell me what I pull out? 3x. What's left over scraps? one, right? A difference of cubes. The 3x is still here. Same, opposite, always positive. What's the first term? X. X minus what? One. What's the cube root of one? One. And then my first term of the trinomial becomes x squared. The last term? 
1. And what's that middle one? X. X. Nice job, guys. So listen, we're not done yet still. This is fully factored, though. Okay? We have, I think, one more example. Factor by grouping. Let me do it with this one right here. Factor by grouping, you're going to pair them up. You're going to do these two and these two. GCF out the biggest thing the first one has in common. GCF out the biggest thing the second one has in common. Okay, so in case you can't see it from the back, this is x to the fourth plus 3x squared. I'm putting these parentheses because I'm doing factor my grouping. Remember you guys would look at my hand and I would show you how 3 could become 4 and then you would pair them up. So 3 became 4, you pair them up GCF. Okay? Guys, what are the scraps left over? X plus 3. What are the scraps left over? X plus 3. Ooh, two of a kind? That's one of my answers x cubed plus x is your other answer. It's not fully factored, though. What could I factor further? I could factor out an x. Is this fully factored? This is fully factored because of what Sammy said. If it's a sum of squares, there's no such thing. It's fully factored. We could go further to get the roots, but we're not asked to do that in this question. And I promise, I needed to show you that, for sure. The question is just well, it was showing like linear and quadratic. So whatever was linear and which one had x squared. This is the last one, guys. I promise. The last one. I have x times x squared plus 8. Please don't put up 8 times x plus 1. We have one more minute. I move this over by subtracting, and then I distributed the following. So then I got 8x cubed, or sorry, x cubed plus 8x minus 8x minus 8 is equal to 0. It looked a little ugly first because I had to move everything to the left side by subtracting that piece. Then I had to distribute so that I could see the 8x is canceled to 0. So now I have a difference of cubes that if I did do this difference of cubes, I could factor it out even further. And please, please look at these notes in your, in your note, um, as far as like at home and whatnot, if you need to, as far as to see the steps. Can anyone think of the 300 point question? It was this. All imaginary roots will always come in pairs. You'll have plus or minus 2i, or 1 plus or minus root x. You with me? Or i root x. But the other ones don't always come in pairs. Imaginary roots always come in pairs.